In this video, you will learn different scientific concepts and formulas that you can implement right now to build a better size Olympiad ping pong parachute. What's up guys? If you don't already know me, my name is Faison and I've competed in Science Olympiad for the past seven years and I'm here to teach you everything I know to help you kill it at your next competition. But before we get into the video, please be sure to leave a like if you enjoy it, drop any questions or feedback that you have in the comments below and subscribe to the channel because I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. All right, so in size Olympiad ping pong parachute, there's two different aspects to the event. There's the rocket aspect and the parachute aspect. And because I already discussed how to build a better size Olympiad ping pong parachute rocket, I'll leave a link to that video in the card uh, up here or in the description below. But in this video, we will be focusing on what you can do to build a better size Olympiad ping pong parachute parachute. So starting off with the very basics, we all know that there's a force called gravity that acts upon every object within the Earth's atmosphere. And we all know that gravity is what pulls all the objects closer towards the Earth in a downwards force. So if you want any object to fall at a slower rate, you need to have a force that acts in the upwards direction to counteract the gravitational force on an object. And the greater that upwards force is, the slower that object will fall. So if you want to increase the amount of upwards force that the parachute places on the ping pong ball, which will increase the time of descent, then you need to increase the size of your parachute. And here's why. So if you think of the air as a large sea of molecules, of air molecules, then you'll notice that there's a ton of molecules such as oxygen, nitrogen, carbon, and other molecules. And the more molecules you catch, the, the greater the time of descent will be. And you can even try this in the real world. If you fill up your bathtub with water and you try to scoop out water with a tiny cup, then you'll notice that it's relatively easy to do so. But if you take a large bucket instead and try to do that same motion, you'll notice that it takes a lot more, fo lot more force to complete that action. And you can think of this in the same way with air. The greater the bucket, or in this case, the parachute that catches the air molecules, the slower the time of descent will B, and that will increase the amount of time it takes for your ping pong ball to go from the top of the ceiling to the ground. And this phenomenon of slowing down the rate of descent by catching more air molecules is what is called air resistance. And air resistance is self-explanatory. It's the amount of resistance an object has against the air. So if you increase air resistance, then you're going to slow down descent. And the way you do that is by increasing the diameter of your parachute. Now, I'm not going to bore you with any of the boring details surrounding the formulas that you need to know and all of the other scientific methods. Uh, science <laughs> now, I'm not going to bore you with any of the formulas that you need to know but I will leave a link in the description below that will take you to my website where I created an article about this exact topic and where I go in depth into all of these equations and telling you what you need to input and how you can, how you can use those formulas to the best of your ability to improve your results. And if you enjoyed the video so far, please leave a like, drop any questions or feedback that you have in the comments below, and I'd really appreciate it if you would subscribe to the channel. I post new videos just like this every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday. And I'll catch you next time. Stay unfazed.